Sagrada Familia by Stephen M. Lambert, Ph.D. December 2022The fam sits in a pew near the altar. It feels good to simply rest. Not that I mind the crowds. I really don't. In fact, I like feeling anonymous, free to move about, no expectations, watching people, curious about who they are, about their lives, the fires that burn. And what I think I can tell from what I see and hear and feel and imagine, yes, the things I quietly invent and quickly assume about others. Listening to these lovers quarrel nearby, I have a story about them. It must be this way, I am quite sure. But after a lifetime of steady misapprehension, I should know better. Who am I to be certain of anything? Then Michael in tones, in baritone sing-song. Say what I say when I say it. <laughs> Everyone laughs together, just like we did when he said it for the first time in our kitchen after Mass that hot summer day some years ago. Our inside joke about our church maybe this church, the largest unfinished Catholic church in the world, these Gothic bones abandoned by one architect and, dare I say, resurrected by another, who infused them with whimsy and color, everything rising and flying and melting away, irreparably, just like this world. Gaudi's babble of beauty and prayer. Santander, Spain. At the top of a hill is a lighthouse and restaurant where the waiter brings a pitcher of sangria and a plate of fried calamari. Wind scatters napkins across the terrace. Okay, I want to make a toast to exploring the riches of Spain with family. We raise and clink glasses together. Well, to be honest, Dad, I'm a little disappointed. I was expecting something more inspired. What? Yeah, Dad, Christine's right. You gotta bring your A-game. Man, you guys are tough. The kids love you, Dad, but we've heard you do better. All right, give me a moment. Let me take another shot at this. I look out on the ocean. Shades of inebriated blue. Turquoise near the cliffs. Hues deepening further out where the Bay of Biscay curves toward France. So I crossed the Atlantic to New York four months earlier. It's Saturday morning. My daughter still is asleep. She flies JFK tonight. And I Google females traveling alone. Not a good idea. Bloody hell, look at these damn things. So I start printing lists, which I bring to Ave downstairs in the kitchen enjoying her coffee by the window, overlooking a backyard covered in January snow. But now she's reading this stuff, too, underlining phrases, messy yellow highlights on every page. And by the time Christine comes down for breakfast, a stack of articles stapled together sits on the table. Hey, Christine, did you ever read those articles Mom and I gave you? Nope, I threw them in the trash at JFK. But the wind pushes the water, 
and the water pushes the waves on the bay of Biscay, and I understand temptation and greed, the currents that swirl underneath cruel riptides. Is anyone immune? I feel them pulling to the ebb and flow, how they ripple out and across this ocean, below this cloudless sky, way, way beyond these shores, corrupting the planet. Witness now our garden's demise. And I understand why Odysseus tied himself to the mast to keep himself safe, crossing the Mediterranean. How the sirens seduce you, my friend, with deadly song. But after passing the island, the danger passed. Our hero remains tied to the mast. Today's caution, tomorrow's chains. So I climb the side of the ship at night, crawl along the deck by moonlight, unsheath my knife and cut the ropes that bind, whispering in his ear, Promise me you'll do something great before Cyclops eats you. Christine pours more sangria and describes her engineering courses at the University of Cantabria, attending classes with students from Florida, Mexico, Germany, and France. On the weekends, she travels to meet friends also studying abroad in a dozen or so European cities. She even trains with first cousin Jenna from Rome to Bari, a port on the Adriatic Sea, where Ava's grandfather left the farm, walked the medieval streets of Aquaviva for the last time, and sailed to New York, passing through Ellis Island, a young man, early twentieth century, no land of milk and honey, no street paved with gold. But Rocco Lombardi found work painting the Dragon Coaster at Playland Amusement Park, which opened on the Long Island Sound in Westchester County in 1928. The same roller coaster that terrified me as a kid in the 60s. A national historic landmark, we later strolled with Michael and Christine in the second decade of this century. I propose a toast. Okay, we've been waiting. Better be good. May travels renew our great spirit and return us home safely, ready to love with abandon in the dearth of time. Oh, Dad, I think you've lost your mojo. Valhalla, New York. One sister flew from Tampa on Friday. We enter gate of heaven and drive up the hill. Morning, autumn, blue, warm. Slight breeze, leaves on fire. We cross the road. The stone is flat on the ground engraved with all his days. Kathy and I share memories. What is left after everything is gone? But he is here. Two years ago I stood on the edge and looked down. 
the polished oak coffin with mahogany veneer lowered so deep why does it need to be so deep dark moist fecund earth so dad's not here no but he must be somewhere another place some other country across an ocean it never ends yet daily i hear his voice feel his passions in my blood can someone feel so alive and not be somewhere i turn away and look down the hill across the slight rise to the gravestones on the other side tears and eyes leaves on fire maybe the idea of peak color is an illusion i always seem to miss it it's coming it's coming almost here any day oops sorry gone maybe there's just before and after with bare trees now awaiting winter cold Adirondacks, New York. The private road from the parking lot passes a golf course, clubhouse, bungalows promising rest, until pavement becomes dirt, where the trail enters the woods, and we start climbing. Heartbeat rises, breathing deep and heavy. Summer sweat comes easy, leaning forward, stepping slow and steady lift and push rock and wood father and son lots of food sixteen pounds of water wool hat and jacket map and headlamps east of the great range where the brown lines on the topographic are dense so we stop on dial mountain on shoulder packs drink and eat all the time talking about school teaching friends playing football in lacrosse coaching the recent tragic death of a teammate who was exceptionally kind when michael needed a buddy the theater of large families and of course the peace corps how do you feel? Are you ready? What do you fear? Alone in your hut under stars in another hemisphere. But wanderlust compels his desire for adventure. How this generation looks at their parents and imagines a different future. And I know it's his time, his moment farmers living off the land in a remote village in africa no running water no electricity teaching english yes we told the kids to dream live this life yet who knew they were listening maybe i should offer some wisdom during the hike some pithy words from decades of living. But instead, father and son climb higher and ravish the high peaks from nipple top, descend to Elk Pass, then Fish Hawk Cliffs, and quite by accident discover the rocky outcrop where Indian Head overlooks lower Osable Lake at dusk a blanket of golden light at day's end. Emerging from the woods fifteen hours later, 
with tired bodies in lion hearts, headlamps ablaze in the dark. Southbury, Connecticut. Another sister drove from Toronto on Saturday with her husband. On the day my father passed in the time of pandemic, October 28th, 2020, my mother forgot how to walk. The young learn, the middles reminisce and reflect, and the elderly forget. Like everything else, there were signs years ago, words that never came, jumbled names, eroded memories. Time stealing one little thing every night while your loved one sleeps, until the house of life is Empty rooms with vacant windows. That's dementia. So Dottie and Dave, Kathy and I, push Mom outside to a clearing with a picnic table and take pictures. River in Glen, tears and eyes, leaves on fire. We love you, Mom. I bend over and kiss her thinning hair. I love you, too. Dad's gone, but still here. Mom's here, but leaving. We adjust the blanket draped over the wheelchair. Are you warm enough? Yes, I think so. We take more pictures. We send them around. Perfect colors. Happy smiles. Please, don't leave. I wish I could stay. Then stay. I'll be back. Promise? Yes, I promise. When? Soon. I never liked waiting. No, it's true. You were rambunctious as a child. Did I learn patience from you or Dad? From me, I prayed every day. Were your prayers answered? Yes, they were. I take her hand into mine. Should we cross? No, not yet. We love you, Mom. I love you, too. Lasaka, Zambia. I awake, alert, 518, Thursday, roll to my wife's side of the bed, my head on her pillow, my thighs against hers. A's been live streaming on her phone since four o'clock. She removes an earbud and gives it to me. The window breeze is cool, her body warm. The camera pans the room, dignitaries at the head table, flags of both countries by the podium, volunteers dressed in bright garments from the market, an audience in folding chairs on green grass under a large white tent, that flaps in the hot, arid breeze. The United States Ambassador administers the oath. 
hard to fathom how making love in the last century culminates in our son's graduation as a Peace Corps volunteer in Zambia. We lie together naked and spread our seeds, hopeful about the future. Yes, maybe our prayers are feckless, our wishes foolish, frail dreams, hopeless vessels on tempestuous seas. But sail and dream we must. We shelter the young and tender, school our children. But can anyone slow the changing seasons? Mother Earth circling sun. Under the comforter, on her pillow, cheek to cheek, I feel her tears, they moisten my face, parents proud beyond measure, darkness, dawn, daylight, and still we yearn and labor for what may some day be true.